What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic. Uh, just for a quick sort of tutorial, I got asked uh, to make turn signals for a car, and I don't know if this has been done before, I think someone has. I remember seeing somebody with blinking lights on a car, and uh, there's a few different ways to make blinking lights happen, but it's really, um, there's really, I, I like using memory bits because, you know, that's who I am, but... Uh, so we've got a few different setups here, but we'll start with the most basic. And the most basic sort of blinker, if you can imagine those two signals there, those two gates on the front there, those are your left and right turn signals. So you can imagine the most simple one is you have a switch for left, a switch for right, and then a third switch for both if you want your always. Now, if you have front and back ones, it doesn't really matter because you connect them both to the same output. And that's really the simplest way to make a turn signal. And it's actually just, it's just a double memory bit. So, um, we're gonna, we're gonna get back to this one a little bit later in the video and we'll, we'll go through how to set up this circuit if you guys wanna actually build it for yourself. Um, but I did make one for the workshop. And so this is the same thing, you just gotta hold that white button there to reset the whole thing because you spawn it on a lift. Um, but this is the same deal except it already has the switches mounted to it. You can always take the switches off. All right, so with the simple uh, turn signal, you just gotta kinda grab it here, put it up on the lift, grab it with a weld point, uh, mount it somewhere, hit that white reset button, just kinda hold it for a bit. Hook the uh, right, the left red up to the left, and the right red up to the right. And then there's already two switches hooked in here, plus a third one for all the lights at the same time. You can remove all these. You can even remove the reset switch too, although I would advise not. Two switches here automatically, so you can uh, include these if you want. You can just wire up to them. I would advise doing that. It's usually the easiest way to do it. But if you really want to move the switches somewhere else, you can do that too. Um, so you've got a yellow switch on the left for the left and yellow switch on the right for the right indicator and uh, the red switch is for all the indicators to all activate at the same time. So we're just going to wire up this one first to get one for the left, two for the right, and three for all of them. And we should have a nice working little system here. You see there, left, right, and all the blinkers. And the timers, if you really want to adjust it, the timer is actually the total blink time. And when I when I when we get to the point of laying out the the uh, circuit, I'll, I'll explain how that part works. But the timer is really the total blink time. I found 0.3 seconds is really kind of nice. Uh, but if you want to adjust it, you could you could easily change the timer, and that'll change the total time. It stays on and off for an even amount of time. So we'll just turn that off there. So this is all pretty exciting, but I didn't really like this method. And the reason I didn't like this method is it uses switches, which means when you're coming around the corner, you have to turn it off. And I think that's really kind of silly because a normal car, when you're driving, as you turn on your turn signal, if you turn the wheel the opposite way enough, it will turn off the turn signal. Or if you turn the wheel the one way and you continue to rotate it as you drive around the corner, it'll eventually turn your turn signal off. And Granted, you can't really do the same mechanic in Scrap Mechanic because with a real car, you rotate the wheel a lot more than you do in Scrap Mechanic, but you can do something very similar. And that's sort of this. So the same mechanism is, is kind of inherent right here. This this chunk of, of two memory bits here, this is the same mechanism before with the blinkers, but this mechanism is a little bit better. So this mechanism is pretty cool, and what it does is it uses buttons, number one, so you don't have to hold the switch, you don't have to hit the switch and then remember to turn it off. You tip tap the button, and you'll see it turns on the left signal. Now, if I turn to the right, you can see there I'm turning to the right, this left signal turns off. Same sense, if I turn on the left signal, and then I turn to the left for, I believe, three seconds, then the left signal will turn it off. So you can actually adjust that, so you can measure how long it takes your car to turn, however much radius you want, and you can adjust that. Now, that being said, if I just tap the left turn, it won't actually turn off the left signal after three seconds. You have to be having the three seconds, and you have to be holding the steering for that same amount of time for it to actually work, or you have to hit the timer at the right time. So I really like this. This kind of mimics how a car would work. And uh, granted, you'll have to adjust your timers a little bit depending on um, how, how big of a turning radius your car has and what kind of settings you want. Uh, but that's all that's all contained quite nicely. And then, of course, the all-way button, number three, it's actually a switch. It's not a button because with your, with your always on a car, it's actually a switch too. So you have to turn it on and turn it off. So this is the advanced turn signal mechanism. Um, it's a little bit more complicated to hook up, but we're going to hook this one up to a car just to prove how this all works. Yeah, that's for it. Okay, good. So just like the other one, the white switch is the, the white button, sorry, is the reset. So you just kind of hold that for a bit. It'll reset everything. So these are your left and right. Now, of course, I still hook this up backwards. So this is actually the left side and this is actually the right. It's if you're looking at the module, which means I have to hook this output up to this side. I'm just going to cross connect everything. That's okay. 
and this output up to this side and again those gates absolutely they don't do anything for the circuit they just uh, they're just the display gates so you do that you hook the steering up to the driver's seat you don't have to change the direction of it I mean you do if you switch the sides you could have always done that you could switch the sides and then just change the steering direction um, and then change the buttons and then of course so we've got left hooked up on the number one and right hooked up on the number two and we're gonna have the four ways hooked up on the number three and we'll put the reset on the number four in case the car needs to go on the lift. We'll go with uh, one, 1. 1.6, let's say. 1.7, sure. All right, left blinker, turn. There you go, it's off by the time you make that 90 degree corner. So you can play around with it again. This is a very, very, really, really good car, actually. I mean, I haven't put any body on it, but it's got a really tight turning radius, you can see there, with four-way steering. Um, but overall, I mean, it's pretty awesome. And then, of course, you can turn on your four ways. You got all four going there. Turn on the right side. Make a corner. Those right side guys turn off. And uh, overall, it's pretty awesome. I'm a really, really big fan of these, and I'm gonna start using them on my builds. I probably won't use the complicated one, like the advanced one, for very many builds, just because I don't want to have to calibrate it for absolutely every one of them. Um, definitely gonna use the smaller one though, with the actual like switch setup. Because I think it's super super useful and uh, super convenient really quickly we're gonna go through how to set up the simple one and just the overall mechanism so you put down a platform here which is now made of metal for some reason but that's okay and we have two display bits two display bits two display bits like so doesn't matter that they're opposite directions and then you set up your memory bits so we're gonna do one nice and big like so and we're gonna do a second one nice and big like so we're gonna set this to be an or gate this to also be an or gate this to be a nor gate this to be a nor gate and so on and so forth another nor gate another nor gate done nor gate to or gate to nor gate nor gate to nor gate or gate to nor gate, to nor gate, to nor gate, to nor gate. okay now you hook up your switches, so one switch to either side and one that goes to both. So one goes to this side, one goes to this side, one goes to both sides. So that's for your left, right, and uh, and all of them. The output of this memory bit hooks up to here, and the output of this one hooks up to here. Then you put down two timers, one for each bit. Set them to whatever time you want. So you do like so, the output of this gets hooked into the timer, which then gets back hooked into this second NOR gate, not the one that you're that's currently lit. Same sense that to that, and the output of this goes to there. And so now, if you press this left button, it will blink. Press the right button, it will blink. And press both buttons. And you can see that they're off because I didn't let it stop, so now if you let it stop, let the timer run out, then they'll blink at the same time. So how this all works is actually really simple. No inputs here right now. The only input is this and this gate here. So we turn this on, this deactivates because it has an input, which means this activates because it has no inputs, which means this activates, which means this timer fills up. Now the timer is full. It becomes the input for this one, which means it turns off. And uh, because this one's off, this OR gate is off. So thus the timer is off. And then when the timer gets to empty, this one still has no inputs because this switch is still off. So it goes back to being on and starts to fill the timer again. You do have to wire up a reset button for when you spawn them on the lift. So when you spawn it on the lift, which I can't really do because I well to the ground, you're going to want to wire a reset button up to both those gates and to both of these OR gates. And that will basically fill both, I gotta put this at 0.3 seconds again. It will basically fill both timers and it will reset the memory simultaneously, which will in turn clear the circuit and set the memory back. If you don't do that, when you take this off a lift, it will just pulse like crazy and you'll have a hell of a time. It'll look like that. So you hold that reset button, it fills the timers, boom, it clears it, done. So anyways guys, I hope you guys like this video. If you have more tutorials you want me to do for Logic, uh, please post in the comments below. I really appreciate that. Um, and I'm gladly, I'm, I'm more than willing to do these Logic tutorials um, and sort of show you a little bit of how it works. And uh, of course, I will be uploading these two modules to the workshop once I put some descriptions and stuff on them. So as always guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, we're almost at 4,000 subs, which is awesome guys. We've been doing great and I really, really appreciate all the support from you guys. And I will continue to make videos if you continue to watch them so hit that like button let me know if you like this kind of thing and as always i hope you guys enjoy this video and i'll see y'all next time